songs and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You kidding me? You can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. Jarl of the Appian Way here with a best of three. Best of three in large funds, ultra unit sizes, same player, two different maps. Both battles, we both used different different heroes, different um, armies. It was just like, just like we were participating in the Iliad Games, which the third Iliad Games registration is going on right now. In the description, go to the Discord there. You'll see registration links where you can join in on a tournament that will be played just like this best of three battles is going to be. All right? Now, let me first of all introduce you to my army. I'm playing a Sparta. I've been trying to test out these uh, renowned Laconian Axemen recently, trying to find, you know, interesting ways to use them other than just, you know, a, a typical flanker unit. And... Yeah, so as such, I brought four of them. They're going to go in supported by a Spar toy and three Laconian Hillmen. And the hero here is a Warlord Mentor. I brought him along so I can take advantage of his Seize the Moment, Rallying Cry, and Heraclean Roar. I also have a Heavy Reinforced Chariot, which is getting ready to sweep on out here deeply to the right. Being supported by three Light Spear Runners in Turtle Mode for that extra speed boost, getting him up to 64. As well, I've brought the most annoying unit in the game, if you ask me. The Warriors of Artemis. Two units. Stalk, Vanguard Deploy, and Bows with 160 range. I love using them to, uh, to bait the enemy into making mistakes. So as you can see here, let me go ahead and kind of scroll up a bit so you can see a little bit of my deployment position and my idea. My plan was to threaten this area, draw him in, and then shoot at them from above with the uh, the Warriors of Artemis while flanking around the long way with my fast units. That was the plan. That was the plan. I'm playing against Paris, and like most Paris players, this guy brought Paris in a chariot, he brought two renowned Trojan Slingers, he brought renowned archers, and then he brought a bunch of heavy infantry. Uh, now, while this this set of uh, three battles is is a best of three in the traditional sense. My opponent was not following the 4400 rule, but I didn't ask it of him anyway. Uh, so as, as you can see here, he's brought a ton of heavy infantry. He has, what is this? This is seven heavy infantry units, an epic hero in a chariot, three skirmish units. That's it. That's the whole thing. 11 units total. I love his picks, though. I do love the renowned Phrygian Axemen. I don't believe he should have spent 7, 8 XP on them. I don't think that was a wise call. Two Champions of Troy, a pair of Heavy Trojan Spearmen. Now, let's get into the battle itself. As anticipated, my opponent is going to start moving out this way. Um, I have a lot of unshielded infantry here, so I'm going to go ahead and start falling back before the Trojan Slingers and the renowned Archers actually punish me greatly. Paris, I, I think he's picked the wrong target here. His arrow shots are coming in for my warlord hero. Yes, thank you for that, Homer. But since I realize that he's shooting at my hero, I turn him around and I start doing the Warhammer dance. That's where you just, you go on out there and you just start dodging arrows. You let him shoot at the hero long enough, you waste your opponent's ammo. That's every, every shot missed by Paris. Every shot that's not used against my infantry is, you know, three to five men saved. So I've also got my Warriors of Artemis in position here. They're inching closer and closer and closer to my weapons range. I probably shouldn't have, have opened fire, but I was just so eager to begin that as soon as they step into range, I'm going to open fire with my Warriors of Artemis. I probably should have held their fire, let him continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper out here. So you can see, I'm just kind of backing up with my uh, with my infantry. Paris has figured out that um, my Warlord Mentor is just dancing, so now he's targeting Spartoy and Renowned Axemen. Bad news for me. I start opening fire with my Warriors of Artemis here into the uh, renowned Trojan Slingers. Look at the damage they take, actually, from these volleys. One of them's already dead. That's that's first blood for me, anyway. He's already killed several of my troops. 
But yeah, you can hear those arrows whistling in, and they're just dropping these slingers until they get out of range. And then I'm going to retarget for these heavy charged spearmen because they are facing the wrong way. And let me just go ahead and start punishing them for uh, for all of that. You can see so many arrows sticking out of backs here. This is great. Yeah, that looks like it hurt, buddy. <laughs> So meanwhile, uh, I've continued to maneuver my forces out this way. Chariots are still making their way around. I've got my um, light spear runners out here in the far left flank, and I'm going to be repositioning those light spear runners right over here. And my opponent will be none the wiser for their being there for quite some time. Paris is back to shooting at my hero again, so I'm gonna go back into, to, into the Warhammer dance. He's already down to 47 ammo out of, how much did he have? I don't know if it'll tell me. It doesn't tell me exactly how much he started with. But you see, he's quick to re readjust and start shooting uh, my infantry. I think I've fallen back enough, and I think my forces are in as good of a position as I'm going to get. Well, that's the wrong color. I'm going to go ahead and get my chariots around back here. Threaten the uh, the aft. And this is actually going to force my opponent to pull back his, uh, some of his heavy infantry. Because he's smart. He does know that he needs to use heavy infantry to defeat my um, reinforced heavy chariots. He doesn't really have anything else for that job. So, as you can see, I've already decided to pull my Warriors of Artemis down from this position up here. I wanted to get them, um, you see the move orders, I wanted to get them over here. I had anticipated they would go around this way. They instead decide they're going to go this way, which is going to put them in the line of fire pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Sparta away, definitely taking a ton of damage. I'm going to go ahead and fall back with them again because I don't just want to sit here and get shot at. I don't really have everything right exactly where I need it, not yet. It's important that before you dive in on your opponent, that you make sure you have all of your tools right where you need them. He's very cleverly the keeping all of his forces together. Unfortunately, my uh, words of Artemis here, they are going to get spotted. But this also just kind of baits the uh, the slingers into trying to do something. Actually, it baits Paris for it. Paris is going to try and get out here, and I'm actually all about this. And as I notice that the Champions of Troy are opening fire on me, I'm going to do a little bit more of that Warhammer dance. I start moving up the Light Spear Runners. I tell the Warriors of Artemis to stop, turn around, and start opening fire. And I'm going to have the Light Spear Runners... I'm going to have them try and get close enough to here to unleash some Javelins at Paris. I run in. I try to, I try to hit him with the melee attack. Not quite enough. He is going to fall back. My um, Light Spear Runners actually start dishing out some Javelins into the Champions of Troy. I didn't want that. Huge damage for these uh, for these warriors of Artemis. You can see here that they were taken from all of that. I go ahead and I turn them around. I've given them new orders to attack the renowned archers. My hero is still getting shot at by Paris. I'm charging up with a spar toy. My chariots are now in position. He's pulled back a champions of Troy, and I I have more than enough infantry to overwhelm all this heavy infantry. My uh, light spear runners have made their presence known. I'm just kind of baiting the renowned Phrygian warriors while shooting them in the flanks with the what's left of my warriors of Artemis. Infantry is kind of collided with the line down here. The champions of Troy are going to be a very tough nut for my renowned Laconian axemen and Laconian hillmen to try and crack. You can see I'm actually losing these battles. Spartoi are also losing their battles. And the threat of my chariots keeps these champions of Troy on the move. And the threat of my light spear runners puts some of these renowned Phrygian axemen on the move. Now this is this is a renowned Phrygian axeman with six XP, but I'm still going to outflank it and defeat it with two um, light spear runners. I get my chariots down here. I get them around the champions of Troy. They're too slow to try and stop my chariots. I charge right into the back of the renowned archers, and then I'm going to loop them around, get them right back here into the renowned Trojan uh, the renowned Trojan slingers. And it looks like my light spirit runners actually got caught by that Phrygian, Phrygian Axeman. I activate Seize the Moment on this Heavy Trojan Spearman, as you can see. This Heavy Trojan Spearman, it is losing now that the renowned Laconian Axeman got involved. And these are fixed heavy infantry facing, you know, being fought on one side. I'm just going to go ahead and rear charge it. Look at the morale of just vanish on the Champions of Troy. My Warriors of Mar Artemis continue to, to uh, you know, take fire on Paris. I've broken the right of their main line. I've broken the center of their main line. The champions of Troy are desperate to stop my reinforced chariots, which are just off on a field day. My, look at this, the renowned Phrygian axe went completely obliterated. I turn around my light spear runners to attack Paris. I got my hero out here too. And we almost break his chariot. It was that close. It was absolutely that close. I'm just chasing around all of his skirmishers now. My opponent wished me a good game. He conceded. He saw exactly what was going on. 
and he he was eager to get into the next battle. Uh, 100% right call to make. You, you can always play those out just for the enjoyment of your opponent, but when you lose and you know you're going to lose, it is okay to, to admit defeat an honorable declaration, in my opinion. So stats from Battle 1 in this best of 3. Uh, only 10 kills for my for my mentor hero, 13, 31, 27, only kind of so-so numbers, 37, 15, 66, and 70. Again, only so-so numbers, but keep in mind, the battle was ended a little bit early, and it was all heavy infantry. Laconian Hillman getting these kills against, against heavy infantry is very impressive. The renowned Laconian Axemen, I think they had the battle gone you know, two minutes longer, they probably would have gotten really beat up down the line, but um, the Heavy Church and Spearmen, they were just completely overwhelmed by the numbers that I sent at them. Very happy with my Light Spear Runner performance. 54 kills, it looks like only one casualty. 60 and 42. Warriors of Artemis? Six kills. Not great. <laughs> Not great in the least. Uh, but they certainly annoyed my enemy. I think that's all I can say about them. 45 kills for the Spartoi. The Spartoi, mostly out there, is just a very expensive um, attack bait. And then the Reinforced Chariots, really happy with that. Like, relatively well controlled his skirmishers, but you can see the, the Warriors of Artemis, though they're clever and tricksy, they lose against other skirmishers once their position is known. They lose quickly. All right, let me go ahead and show you Battle 2. All right. Battle 2. This time, my opponent brought Mycenae. That's right. This is his army set up right here. Whereas I brought Dardania. Dardania is a faction I am very confident with and I know I can do really well with. Uh, my hero this time is an Archer Trickster hero. I meant to put an Archer Trickster on foot. I thought I had swapped over to the Archer Skirmisher to put him on a chariot. Don't ever do this. This is a mistake. Um, the Archer Trickster can really only use his abilities if he is on foot. Now, I think my opponent deployed Agamemnon out here as a mistake or because he intended to try and harass my army. But I have the Archer Trickster here. That um, Javelin Chariot that Agamemnon has, that's ultimately going to to punish him for, for having that option there. The rest of his army, though, he did bring four armored spearmen, one of the best heavy infantry units all around in the game, backed up by two armored swordsmen. He did spend four XP on this one armored swordsman, I see, and one on that one. He's also got Nagamon on guard hidden in the in the scrubs. He went out of his way to make sure that that unit was in the scrub line. And then he's brought a pair of bows of Mycenae. Very expensive, but a decent bow unit. Just a bit too expensive for what they bring. Meanwhile, my army, I've brought four Dardanian Rabble, a pair of Axe Chargers, three Dardanian Defenders, three Fearless Swordsmen, a Savage Centaur Warrior, two of them, and a Centaur Champion. I gambled, I gambled that when my opponent picked Mycenae, that based off of his play in Battle 1, he would not want to bring Chariots to a map that has Scrubs at each of the uh, four corners and in the center. I gambled. Um, I, I felt that I might be able to be successful if I brought champions. Anyway, I see Agamemnon out here. So the first thing I do is I order all my fast units to try and catch him before he gets out of there. Agamemnon's going to go ahead and fall back all the way into the relative safety of his army. And this frees me to threaten him from pretty much only two directions. Because of this cliff face that's right here, all he needs to do is defend this and defend this to some degree, and he can keep whatever he wants up here safe. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly threaten this back portion with my with my centaurs. And just like in the last battle, because he was threatened in his aft, he's going to leave behind several heavy infantry units just to ward off my centaurs. The uh, Bows of Mycenae are going to go ahead and try and take some pot shots at my Archer Trickster hero. I'm going to go ahead and start moving up my uh, my infantry. But unexpectedly, he's going to push. He's going to push down from here. He doesn't just want to turtle up here and defend himself. He is, he is being very protective of his Bows of Mycenae, which is smart. He needs to. They're expensive. But he's chasing my uh, rabble right now. 
I mean, and I guess why not? Downside, though, for him is that his units will get very, very tired very, very quickly. Well, I see that these, you know, armored swordsmen are out here. I turn around to attack them. And that's when I notice that they also turn around. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll leave you alone then. All the while, my uh, Dardanian defenders are dishing out the javelins here. And because he ran away a little bit, I was able to pull him out a little bit further and then turn around and charge back on in. He's going to go ahead and bring down some of these spears to, to kind of take this position. So as Zagmanon's guards up there. And I'm unleashing javelins now at Agamemnon. I'm just, I'm letting him have it. I'm getting my heavy infantry in here to start fighting some of his heavy infantry down the line. I try flank attacking this armored swordsman with an axe charger, but he also is attacking that axe charger with his armored spearman. And out here, I'm just trying to give this armored swordsman something to do, so I feed it a pair of Dardanian rabble. His archers are doing what they can to stop my Dardanian defenders, but I need you to look at this. 70 armor, 55% missile block chance. We popped Agamemnon's chariot. That's now no longer a problem. And now my hero really doesn't have to worry about... Um, worry about anything else. I'm going to order him to come over here, stand at this position. I saw the Agamemnon's guards. His ammo can best be used for that. I split up my centaurs to uh, try and find, like, maybe I can find a path through around here, but he kind of shifted everything over to the left. So I'm going to start moving all of my centaurs into the scrubs. This is going to convince him to pull back his Agamemnon's guards and reposition one of his armored spearmen. You can see he's being very Cagey. He wants to. He wants to make sure he protects his bows of Mycenae, and I'm trying to do everything I can to get around these um, heavy spears. But I'm also completely content to tango with him up here. I want it. I want this dance. This dance is great for me. Why? Because I'm preventing three of his best units from participating down here. Where I brought six heavy infantry of my own, and this is allowing me the opportunity to beat the tar out of Agamemnon, beat up these armored spearmen. And eventually clean up down the line, get a hold of both of these guys. You can see this armored swordsman did just fine with the rabble, but hey, I left them busy. I've got regrouped axe chargers now. They're going to come in here and take care of this. And I'm still just kind of being coy up here. I'm dancing around. I'm giving him stuff to do, things to look at. His archers are trying to point blank, shoot into the flanks of my Dardini defenders. That's a good bet, but uh, I'm, I split up his spearmen some, as you can see here. And I did manage to get... The Sa Savage Centaur Warriors and a Centaur Champion all the way through. I give them orders to attack Agamemnon. This is pretty much a done deal for me as far as I'm concerned. I got past the Spearman, and I've got a Fearless Swordsman up the hill now to charge into that Armored Spearman. Agamemnon is desperately trying to get away from the Centaurs. It isn't working out. I see that he's now falling back trying to deal with that, so I'm going to charge in with this Savage Centaur Warrior right where he doesn't want to see him. Beat up another Heavy Infantry unit. I've got this one pulled out of position. My archer trickster hero is going to shoot these guys that are, that are now outside of the tree line. I re-engage my Dardanian rabble into that unit. And then the other armored swordsman just, just freed himself up. I do get rear charged by Agamemnon's guards. Not good, but I have plenty of space to retreat from now that the armored spearmen here have, uh, have broken. The armored swordsmen are going to turn around, re-engage. I'm going to go ahead and let them fight my Dardanian defenders. I did rear charge this Darmored Spearman with that Savage Centaur Warrior rather than attack the, the Bows of Mycenae because I kind of realized their ability to contribute in this battle was very slim. But the Armored Spearmen, they were outflanking my Fearless Sword, so I'm going to turn around and charge in with my Savage Centaur Warriors fairly regularly to try and do something about this. Agamemnon is still routing, or else he probably would have activated his Aristea, and he's getting really beat up. I do have these uh, Centaurs. Here we go. Check it out. Huge hit. He's very good. My opponent was very good to turn around his spearmen to um, to meet the charge of my centaurs, but man, I've just engaged him, completely surrounding him. My units are still losing that battle, so I do disengage. His units are losing. His everything is losing at this stage. His bows of Mycenae still desperately trying to get kills. One of them with 46, one of them with 28, neither of them earning their XP. Agamemnon being very slippery. There he goes. He's finally fallen in battle. And that leaves the balance of power to swing even more in my favor. I dismount my uh, my archer trickster hero so I could use him to fire some of these uh, some of those triple shots into that uh, armored swordsman. Definitely helped take care of that. I'm now regrouping him. I'm going to have him fire into the backs of these Agamemnon's guards. I think we'll have a triple shot here coming soon. But as you can see, I'm also getting my uh, centaur champions into position. Got this completely surrounded. I activate my Aristea so I can use another triple shot. Trying to fire off as many of those as I can. 
you could really rapid fire shotgun with a uh, with an archer with an archer trickster hero. But that was definitely the end of battle two, and I took it two nothing. Best of three. That's that's the format for which the tournament is going to be taking place in, and we want you to join the tournament. Um, the first two tournaments were both very successful. We had 14 and 15 competitors in both. I'd like to get a nice solid 16 competitor spread so that we can have a very even bracket all the way through. Um, so we'd love to see you register and don't, please don't be intimidated because all of the competitors that are involved in this are actually very helpful, very friendly guys, and they want to see the quality of play improve for everyone, not just themselves. Um, but beyond that, we also have some for fun events because we're doing the Iliad games, not just the tournament. So we've got like a chariot race that we're going to be doing in Troy. We've got an FFA competition that we want to try out. And heck, we might even do some, some big team battles. All right. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me go ahead and show you the statistics real quick. So as you can see, no big surprise, one, one, five, three. <laughs> Dardanian Rabble are not meant to kill things, guys. Five kills for this Axe Charger, only so-so. 22 for this one. I kind of had the funds left over, and I didn't want to bring, like, 12 Rabble, so I brought the Axe Chargers is what I did. 57 kills for my Trickster. I'm, you know, I'm only kind of so-so about that. Made the mistake of bringing a Trickster instead of the Skirmisher. I probably just should have brought the Trickster on foot, and I could have, instead of buying his Chariot, I could have brought another Dardanian Rabble. My uh, Heavy Infantry did just fine. This one only kind of so-so with five kills. Seven Centaur Warriors, it looks like they didn't do great, but you saw, just by in the maneuvering, how valuable those two Centaurs were. And look at this, 263, 321. I, I feel for you, Javis. I feel for you. I would be infuriated if I had units that... that if I had two units that managed almost 600 kills... I would be furious trying to figure out why I didn't win. But I fed these guys my rabble so that I could clean up the rest of the army. I, I had the two armored swordsmen busy with my rabble. I had uh, two armored spearmen and an agamemnon on guard busy with my, ch with my uh, centaurs. What does that leave him with? It leaves him with two armored spearmen, agamemnon and two bows of Mycenae to face all of my infantry and my hero. Numbers count. Numbers count. All right, that's it. Ta-ta. I love you all. See you guys in my next video. Whoops. Trying out new earbuds. And it, that's when it decides to fall out.